This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, and I'll read it in both the KJV and NLT versions. It says, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living power, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. NLT, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in Yahweh, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. And this is the book of Genesis, chapter 45, verse 5. After all that happened unto Joseph, who is like Joseph, who was a stay unto his brethren? Those will not get that. Genesis 45 and 5. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, ancient Egypt or Mizraim. For Yahweh did send me before you to preserve life. That's what I want to get real quick. Let me get uh, Joseph. I'm going to go back to that. Who was a stay unto his brother, the apocrypher. And we're going to get right into this lesson. Uh, oh, yeah. Please ask us. Yup. And it reads, Ecclesiastes 49, 15. Neither was there a young man born like Joseph, a governor of his brethren, a stay of the people whose bones were regarded of the Lord. Yahweh, Lashem Yahshai. I'm going to read verse 16 too. Sim, which is Shum, our forefather, the son of Noah, by whom we came uh, through our facts set all on down to Abraham. And Seth, going back to Ashatya, which was a compensation for Abel after he was slew, were in great honor among men. And so was Adam, and we know who that is in the spirit, above every living thing in creation. Because through the second Adam, we have access back to the Father, and we have all things to enjoy. And we are never uh, without. For he will never leave us nor forsake us, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is our helper. Let me get that real quick. Hebrews, got to go there. Here we go, jump right into this thing. It's Hebrews 13, start at verse 5. It reads, let your conversation, which is your manner of life, be without covetedness and be content with such things as ye have. For he have said, who? Yahweh Shai. And if you are a newcomer to this uh, thing, I just mentioned the name of the Heavenly Father and his son in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, our language. So wait, a, wait around a while and you will learn and see the power thereof of the true and proper name of the Father and his only begotten Son. Now let's read this verse again. Let your conversation, which is your manner of life, be without covetedness and be content with such things as ye have. For he have said, Yahweh Bashem Shai, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Verse 6 is the point. So that we may boldly say, not proudly, but boldly say, the Lord Yahweh, Bashim Yahshua, is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me because uh, man is about to crash this system and bring down this society and you shall be uh, <laughs> own nothing and be happy. That's what is in man's mind. Why do the heathen rage and imagine a vain thing? But those of us that have the means, why the society is still standing, just as Joseph was in a great place in Egypt during a very turbulent time he gave unto his brethren. He was a stay of the people, our people. will be the same. The church, the household of faith, that house of David, the believers, those that trust in Yahweh shall be fed, shall be filled. We have never seen, as David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. All right, now let's go back to Genesis so like it. 49. All right. Or was it 45? Let's see. Yep, 45. And with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, in whom the world is ignorantly called Jehovah, or Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, in whom the world as they really call Jesus Christ, in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and some Indians, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, 
greetings, giving double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so that taught me and brothers like me this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power and of his anointed. Now these are the two most important things you will ever or could ever know coming into this truth, being in this world, living in these last times will be the name of the father and of his only begotten son, their true and proper names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, our language, the language of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American and Seminole Indians, your true language, your connection back to the father for the language in the heavens is Hebrew. All right, the pure language, the Lashwan Kodash, which means holy tongue. Lashawan meaning tongue and Kodash meaning holy. All right, this is the most important thing you can know. For by belief ooh, is, it, is this to the saving of the soul. All right, and faith cometh by hearing, even hearing the word of God. Yahweh Bashmashai. Yahweh is the Father, and his word that was made flesh that dwelt among us is Yahweh Shai. Now, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yah meaning he, Hawa meaning exists or is or is to be. He is, he exists. He, the existing one, for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And in the name of his only begotten son, who has a name that is above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite man first, and also to the believers consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets, and those that have faith. Even the mighty name, the glorious name, the name that was set apart, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men, the Israelite men, to call upon by whom we are saved, even the name of Yahawashai, Yah, meaning he, Havashai, meaning deliverer and savior. And that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form, yet as an angelic force. For we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. Entering into life eternal, for this is life eternal, to know the one true God and the one whom he have sent. It all begins with that belief, faith, for it is a gift. Now, this is the book of First Timothy 6 and 18. And I'll read it in both the KJV and NLT versions. And Lord, will I not call this lesson? Willing to communicate, ready to distribute. <laughs> As is the verse, the spirit. They that do good, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. And we have that in this brotherhood. We have a, ooh, we have a beautiful causeway, a beautiful enterprise, a beautiful uh, well-oiled machine of helping one another of distributing, being ready to do so and willing to communicate. We're communicating uh, uh, different different articles, uh, uh, the know-how, whether it be health or, or betterment or body, uh, you know, uh, you know, calculating your bod bodily functions. All right, uh, going over scriptures, going into the Hebrew, going into prayers, going into healing and medicines, going into uh, 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 anointing prayers. We're doing all this in this body of work. It never ends for it is the work of Yahabash Mashai and with him there is no respect of persons and also he is not uh, uh, unrighteous to forget our labor and work of love toward his name. So we are willing to communicate and ready to distribute whatever it, 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 it is. It doesn't have to be uh, always finances. It could be just a word of of a uh, good, a word of encouragement. You have exhortation, edification. Brothers are, are, are very profound on exhortations, edification, going into the history, going into our language, going into the culture, and ultimately prophecy. You see? And that's what we do. 
So praise ye, Yahweh Bashemashai. For those of you brethren, uh, uh, just understand, do not take this for granted. Do not abuse the brotherhood, but understand what it truly is. It happened in the past. I'm going into uh, the history of, of Joseph being the stay of his brethren, stay of the people. All right. And then I'm going to go into the history um, also in the book of Acts and what they did during the time of famine, which is lack of resources. So those willingness is edifying. Let's get right into it. NLT, verse 18. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need. Those of the household of faith. Always being ready to share with others. And all things common. It says lay up in store for themselves or laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life, NLT. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Woo it happened before uh, 2020 where everything shut down. Brothers was so happy, but it is gonna happen again. And this is gonna be for real. And we are gonna do just as, as we always have been doing, trusting in Yahweh Bashim Shai and loving one another, all right? For those to uh, hang all the law, okay? Man, and that's it. So, oh, uh, all things common, let me get that. All things common, so like it. Common. This is just on my mind, dwelling, you know, just going through the week, how brothers help one another out and how we uh, help brothers, and you feel great helping a brother that, that you truly love in Yahweh Shai, and he loves you back, and he'll do the same for you. So, hey, Barakata Yahweh Shai, man, for this brotherhood, man. Now, this is Acts 2 and 44. Now, I'm going to start. Uh, I'll start. I'll start at verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. This is going into the great uh, sermon that Peter gave along with the other disciples. All right, after the Lord had risen and left and gave them the Holy Spirit to speak in different tongues and languages. And it reads on verse 42. And they continue steadfastly, the believers. It says the believers form a community. It says they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers, NLT. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. And now the Lord's Supper uh, goes into preferably the Passover. All right, certain uh, members coming in, they understand what the Passover is all about. It's not a lamb dinner. It is very, uh, uh, is very essential, and it is also, what's the word, uh, solemn. It's a solemn assembly, and it connects us intimately back to our power, what he did for us in Egypt, and how he delivered us from our enemies, and how, even though our people were hard-headed and we wandered in the wilderness, it shows you that the Lord kept us in the wilderness those 40 years though the old generation died off and the new generation got in to the land with joshua and caleb it goes to show you how the lord kept our people but this time the lord is going to keep the household of faith even those that trust in his holy and mighty name and his son's name and will call upon them in the time of their trouble all right Reads on, verse 43, and fear came. Ooh, now, this is the point. This is the point because we're coming into troubling times. But what is going to fall upon the true believers? Fear, fear of the Lord. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And it's going to happen again. Verse 43, NLT, a deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miracles miraculous signs like it and performed many miraculous signs and wonders verse 44 and all that believed were together Woo! and had all things 
common. You see that? Acts 2 and 44, NLT, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Verse 45, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, Israelite men, as every man had need. See? Uh, NLT, they sold their property. You know, back then we had land, property, and possessions. Now, when this society crumbles and collapses and goes into a digital system, how much more us to let go of everything and trust in the Lord and distribute all that we have unto uh, each other? It says they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need, those of the household of faith, those of our uh, nation. All right, verse 46, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Now the temple is us because they would consort to our actual temple at Jerusalem. But now we are the temple pretty much as the scriptures say in another place, um, assembling yourselves, seeing, seeing that the day approacheth. I forget how it goes. Um, dang, how, how's it go? Let me get it. Um, let me get it real quick. Let's see, you see a day approaching. Because we assemble uh, to preach, we assemble to uh, commune. And then uh, now we can all assemble on, on, on the net. It don't matter where you at. You could be somewhere else in the world and you still um, you're still among us. All right, I see the day approaching. Okay, bear with me. Bear with me, brother Slaggy. There it is. Hebrews 10 to 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching the day of Yahweh Shemashai, his return. And there are certain things in store that must happen before the return of the Lord. The MOTB, number one. Jacob's Trumbull, number two. World War three. That's major. Then civil wars won't break out in this society. Societal collapse. Uh, newly created creatures, a time like never before. But what is going to keep us stable and anchor, even our faith? For that is our victory over this world that Yahweh, the Father, raised Yahweh Shai from the dead, and He can do the same for us and deliver us out of any situation. Praise ye the Lord. This is Acts 2 and 46 in LT. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. See that? I see it. It says, praising Yahweh and having favor with all the people. And the Lord Yahweh, Shai, added to the church daily such as should be saved. Woo! And that's what's going to happen in these times. And that's what's happening in our time. All the while, praising Yahweh and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, Yahweh Shai added to their fellowship those who were being saved. I see it. I see it, man. This is Genesis 45 and 6. This was in ancient Egypt during the time of famine, lack of resources. But Joseph was placed there, even though in, in a sense it would seem like all oh, that, you know, oh, his brothers hated him and all that. But it was for the purpose of Yahweh and the preservation of our nation. So it goes to show you, even with the hate of our people here in this place and everywhere else, we're still preaching the word. We're still going strong. We're still trusting in the Lord. And nothing's going to stop us. Nothing at all. All right. Now, let's get it. Uh, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 21. Going into what's going to be happening right before the Lord makes his grand return. This is Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. Going into solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, blood moons, wolf moons, blue moons, worm moons, pink moons. Okay, and, and other things in the sun. All right, different signs. And in the stars. And upon the earth, because what happens in the heavens dictates what goes on on the earth. All right, just as the moon pushes and pulls the tide, what happens in the heavens, the signs that the Lord shows with the armies above, 
dictates what happens on the earth, how people trip and bug out and and what happens on the earth. They're talking about this climate change and all that. No, it's the working of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Shai, his signs in the heavens. From, from meteor showers and stars and other things happening in the heavens, things are happening on the earth. It says, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, going into the people, nations and tongues, but actual seas and waves roaring because the moon has uh, a push and pull on the tides and our bodies are made of 70% or more of water. So what happens in the heavens, it, it, uh, it affects us in some type of way, whether it be good or bad. It's all spiritual. This is a Luke 21 and 25 NLT. And there will be strange signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the Lord.